AWS is the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. Millions of customers trust AWS to power their infrastructure and applications. Organizations of every type and size are using AWS to lower costs, become more agile, and innovate faster. AWS provides on-demand delivery of technology services via the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. You can use these services to build and run virtually any type of application without upfront costs or ongoing commitments. You only pay for what you use. AWS gives you more services and more features within those services than any other cloud provider. This makes it faster, easier, and more cost-effective to move your existing applications to the cloud and to build anything you can imagine. From infrastructure technologies like compute, storage, and databases, to emerging technologies such as machine learning and artificial intelligence, data lakes and analytics, and Internet of Things. Building on AWS means you can choose the right tool for the job. For example, AWS offers the widest variety of databases that are purpose-built for different types of applications. Worst thing to ever happen. With AWS, you can leverage the latest technologies to experiment and innovate more quickly. We are continually accelerating our pace of innovation to invent entirely new technologies you can use to transform your business. Like pioneering the serverless computing space with the launch of AWS Lambda, which lets developers run their code without provisioning or managing servers. And AWS built Amazon SageMaker, a fully managed machine learning service that empowers everyday developers and scientists to use machine learning without any previous experience. We are constantly expanding our global network of AWS regions, so you can access AWS services to build and run your applications from anywhere in the world. Each of these regions has multiple availability zones that are physically separated from each other and connected by low latency, high throughput, and highly redundant networking. This makes it easy to design and operate applications that are scalable, fault tolerant, and highly available. Our infrastructure is built to satisfy the security standards of the most risk-sensitive organizations. You also have access to the AWS Partner Network, which has thousands of systems integrators who specialize in AWS services, and tens of thousands of independent software vendors who adapt their technology to work on AWS. With the largest community of customers across every industry, AWS has unmatched experience and operational expertise you can depend upon for your most important applications and every imaginable use case. I'm from Singapore. From Vietnam. AWS User Group Thailand. I'm an AWS Community Builder. I run the user group in Singapore as a community hero. I'm an AWS Community Builder. We love AWS community. Go AWS. I'm so proud that all the group members are very proactive to support each other. So I'm really passionate about making artificial intelligence and machine learning more accessible. I'm also one of the AWS machine learning heroes around the world. It's a global, positive, and diverse community. I'm uh, an Amazon Web Service community hero in the United States. The love of the technology and the friendship in the community. Go in AWS. And welcome to the 27th episode of the Community Ignite series, Building Modern Apps with Containers. My name is Tony Prokoso. I'm an AWS uh, Senior Developer Advocate offering for ASEAN. I'm super happy to be here again and share with you on how you can build applications with AWS. To win customers, they need to build better products. And to build up better products, they need to release features faster. And containers, as one of the modern technology, it can help us to manage all of these challenges. First, we have Amazon ECS for you who wants to deploy and operate your container apps. We also have EKS if Kubernetes is your preferred flavor. And you also have two options for hosting your containerized application. 
if you want to have granular control, you can use Amazon EC2. And, and that's actually why AWS release AWS Copilot. It's a common LAN interface or CLI that you can interact in your terminal, which enables you to quickly launch and easily manage containerized application on AWS. This is co-presented by Amazon Web Services and AWS Ciclav Filipina. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of IT resources via the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. Instead of buying, owning, and maintaining physical data centers and servers, you can access technology services such as computing power, storage, and databases on an as-needed basis from a cloud provider like Amazon Web Services. Organizations of every type, size, and industry are using the cloud for a wide variety of use cases such as data backup, disaster recovery, email, virtual desktops, software development and testing, big data analytics, and customer-facing web applications. For example, healthcare companies are using the cloud to develop more personalized treatments for patients. Financial services companies are using the cloud to power real-time fraud detection and prevention. And video game makers are using the cloud to deliver online games to millions of players around the world. With cloud computing, your business can become more agile, reduce costs, instantly scale, and deploy globally in minutes. Cloud computing gives you instant access to a broad range of technologies so you can innovate faster and build nearly anything you can imagine. From infrastructure services such as compute, storage, and databases, to Internet of Things, machine learning, data analytics, and much more. You can deploy technology services in a matter of minutes and get from idea to implementation several orders of magnitude faster than before. This gives you the freedom to experiment and test new ideas to differentiate customer experiences and transform your business, such as adding machine learning and intelligence to your applications in order to personalize experiences for your customers and improve their engagement. You don't need to make large upfront investments in hardware and overpay for capacity you don't use. Instead, you can trade capital expense for variable expense and only pay for IT as you consume it. With cloud computing, you access resources from the cloud in real time as they're needed. You can scale these resources up and down to grow or shrink capacity instantly as your business needs change. Cloud computing also makes it easy to expand to new regions and deploy globally in minutes. For example, Amazon Web Services has infrastructure all over the world, so you're able to deploy your application in multiple physical locations in just a few clicks. Putting applications in closer proximity to end users reduces latency you. and improves their Points. experience. No matter your location, size, or industry, the cloud frees you from managing infrastructure and data centers so you can focus on what matters most to your business. Are you working on projects or making decisions that require understanding cloud fundamentals and benefits? The AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Certification validates foundational cloud knowledge, including how the cloud impacts your business, core AWS services and use cases, billing and pricing models, and security concepts. Demonstrate your cloud fluency by achieving an industry-recognized credential from AWS. Highlight your proficiency and be a part of your organization's cloud adoption from any role. AWS certified. Build with confidence, competence, and credibility. And welcome to the 28th episode of the Community Ignite series, AWS Fault Injector Simulator Demo. We'll be focusing on uh, AWS Fault Injection Simulator. So AWS has taken the, the steps of chaos engineering and uh, and kind of uh, made it in a way that's a managed service where you can do these experiments very easily. There are a number of tools out there, but this is a service. You don't need to do anything. You just can build the experiments and you'll see how to do this shortly. And you can run the experiments against your infrastructure, okay? So you have a, a archive or a log of all the experiments you run. And you can actually stack experiments together and, and build complex experiments as well. 
and uh, we can see what happens uh, to the instances um, when I run the experiment. So obviously, again, there's a still little wrap up time here. It's uh, pending and then it will start really quickly. You can see how um, how this tool can be used to collect uh, different uh, data and run your experiment. So it gives you a nice way to run different things. Thank you to AWS and AWS C Cloud Filipinas. Hello everyone! Happy Thursday and good evening to all. I can really feel the energy of God in the chat box. Alam na nila na isistate nila yung uh, university and yung mga uh, profession and everything. Just wow. Hello, maganda gabi sa lahat. Welcome back to another episode of the Community Ignite series. It is now our 29th webinar and today we're gonna know all about trending AWS cloud services and the tips on how to be a, pra uh, a practitioner. So I am your host tonight, Darla David, a Technical Community Manager of Education PH. And I am so happy to see you all again. Thank you for taking the time to attend this free one-hour tech-driven webinar. So before we continue, you guys know the drill already. I want to know how you're doing the man, no? So four days left. Hello, Jason. Four days left, tapos, uh, tapos na ang month of February. So, paano nyo susulitin yung days nyo, right? Bago mag-March. So, let me know what you're gonna do for the last uh, days of February. So, if you're a student, let me know then what university you're from and pag professional naman, type your career in the chat box. I would also like to get then our FB Live viewers. So, comment nyo rin dyan. Pakilala rin kayo sa ating FB Live comments. So, don't forget to also share rin sa inyong timeline yung FB Live. So, hello Trisha. Hello from Hello, Archie from Universidad, uh, Universidad de Manila, from EAC Manila. Hello, Royce. Hello from LU, Mr. Jack. Hello, then from another student from Universidad de Manila, Ferdinand. Uy. Hello, Denver from UST. Hello, Giller. Hello, Joe Bernan. Hello, Angela. Ayan, ang daming taga Universidad de Manila. I wonder why. Ayan. So, if you're new here, Community Ignite series are short episodes every Thursday, 6 to 7 p.m. You know, it's where we bring people, product, and purpose together. So you as a young IT professional or early in your career or, you know, just a young at heart or starting in the tech and uh, tech industry, you will definitely benefit from this series, especially that like, this is co-presented by no, sino kaya? Ayan, Amazon Web Services and AWS C Club Filipinas. All right. So this event is all for free and all comes with an e-certificate. All right, so in the previous episode, the topic was all about a demonstration on AWS Fault Injection Simulator. So you can check all about it on our social media accounts. So make sure to follow our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn to stay updated. Search lang AWS Club Filipinas, or you can scan the QR code flashed on the screen. And so hello then from Mark Advincola from DXC Technology. Wow, bonga. Hello then from Ilipa City Colleges, uh, Miko and Jomar. Hello then from Quezon City University, si Ma'am Christy. All right. So again, no, ako naman, di ba? Kanina I asked you guys a question. Mukhang walang nagsagot ng question ko. What are you gonna do, di ba, for the last uh, days of February? So what I'm gonna do naman is, ang gagawin ko for the rest of February is to release more content on my YouTube channel. Nako, parang walang sumasagot sa aking question. Anong gagawin nyo? Ayan, attend more and more webinars, register on our event AWS Restart, and just attending webinars. Nako, maraming webinars ang hinanda po namin for this month and next month. So, hello again, YouTube channel ready. Nako, mamaya na lang. Ayan. So, hello again to our 148 participants here in Zoom and also to our FB live viewers. Ayan. So, John is going to spend the last day of his February reviewing for the Cloud Practitioner Certification. So, good luck and meron coming events that will help you with that. And all right, chat naman kayo if ready na kayo, if handa na kayo malaman kung sino ang speaker natin for tonight. Are you guys ready? Let me know. Okay, ready, ready, ready si Nicole, si Danica, si Acha, si Joe Verdan. Sino pa? Ready, ready. Ayan, may mga exclamation points. Uh, may exclamation point pa sila. Let's go, sabi ni Maria. Alright, so ready na, no? So our speaker is our very own technology, uh, technology officer, advisor, and special projects. He's also the first 
AWS Community Hero in the Philippines. So it's really an honor to have him tonight and learn from his experience and insights. No, we have an AWS Community Hero here today. Sino kaya yun? So he's also a content creator on YouTube. So make sure to check him out. Search niya lang, Young CTO. Very, very young. Very, very pak na pak. Kaya wag natin patagalin pa. Let's give it up for Sir Rafael Kisambing. Hello, Sir Rafi. How are you tonight? Kamusta naman ang February ninyo? Yes, hello. Uh, our February is great. No? Um, it's the month of red. Um, and, you know, month of roses. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a good uh, experience. All right, sir. Take it away. All right. So hello everyone. Uh, let me allow me to share my screen. No? And again, I'm happy that you are here to listen to my talk. So my talk is basically trending. No? What are the AWS cloud services and how to become a cloud practitioner, right? Ayan, admit ko lang yung others sa room, no? Kasi madaming uh, papasok pa. And yeah, thank you so much again. Indeed, even the, not just the topic, but our community is trending uh, all over, right? So just a short introduction again of myself. Um, to, to let everyone know, I've been practicing IT for over 15 years, no? uh, close to 17 years now. My language of choice is still... Uh, the open source or the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, right? And I've been a community hero uh, for AWS or Amazon Web Services, and I've actually been certified on the cloud since 2013. Right? And I have several certifications, and I'm also an instructor as well. Right. So let's look at cloud trends no? um, first, no? before we go into the actual services of the cloud. So uh, in 2021, no? this is a data on 2021 uh, or uh, article published in 2021, mid-2021, right? 90% of all companies are on the cloud or using the cloud, in other words. So only 10% globally are not yet on the cloud. No? 87% of enterprises enterprises have a hybrid cloud strategy, meaning they're using the cloud at the same time their own local, right? 80% of these enterprises use Amazon Web Services as their primary cloud platform, meaning um, they, they really prefer Amazon Web Services over other cloud providers. No? And the public cloud, Okay, our projects in, in, in this space is projected to grow by 18.4% or basically you can also consider the same number for 2022. So it's a growing market, right? Of 2021, okay, only 38% use private cloud. So again, um, it's really moving towards this space of what we call the public cloud or these enterprise, um, you know, uh, Amazon Web Service specifically right and interestingly i would like to add here but um the statistics no 60 percent of companies use cloud technology in order to store confidential data right so if you actually look at this article which you can see the link here as well you'll actually find a lot of interesting things about uh, more statistics and even about security where it shows that a lot of security, uh, the cloud is actually more secure um, than your on-premise, right? So as again, you can see that cloud is the way to go. Uh, it has been uh, ever since, and it's now uh, still is the dominant, okay, dominant field for for IT. Okay, and AWS uh, in its recent. Okay, in recent survey or study, okay, still is number one. Okay, so Amazon Web Services over 15 years has been number one in the cloud platform. You know? And for enterprises, uh, sorry, for startups, since we did mention enterprises a while ago, startups, again, AWS Cloud is still the largest pie, right? So you, as a practitioner of cloud, you might want to think, hey, where are most of the jobs? Okay, most of the jobs are definitely on AWS Cloud. Okay. And in 2022, this year, okay, clickittech.com okay, researched for us what are the top 
expected AWS service list uh, in 2022. Now, AWS is notorious, I would say infamously notorious for having so many services, right? In the reinvent of last year, the conference, right? Um, our the CTO of Web, Amazon Web Services joked that there's so many services because the customers ask for so many services, right? So as a new practitioner, you might have a hard time or you might be confused or you're, you're going to think, oh, where do I start? Because again, AWS has over 200 services and each of those services has like a ton of features. No? It's not just like a service and it does something simple. There's a lot of deep features per service. And again, here are your top 10. Notice, okay, um, that some of these are quite familiar. Or if you've uh, practiced AWS before, or you know you've heard of this, okay, it's it's not what you would expect. No, we're not talking about here machine learning. We're not talking about these edge computing. No, it's it's quite simple, right? Uh, this is a virtual machine. This is a database. This is storage. This is CDN. So what you would typically know presently on, on, on your local adoption is actually also still the top services in the cloud. So how do I, if I'm new, if I want to practice cloud, right? My first step actually is to map out my physical or what I have access to, to the cloud, right? I think what is the more or less equivalent to my, my setup and what's that in the cloud, right? So again, okay, if we're talking about firewalls, security, administrators, okay, if I look at the cloud, okay, I can think of that like security groups, network ACLs, and IAM. So I just map it. If I need a firewall, right, your Windows firewall, that's something like a security group, okay? If I need uh, access control list on my network, okay, uh, that's a network ACL. And in terms of users, right, okay, that's my IAM, right? For networking, okay, for my router, my network pipe, my switches, basically that's ELB and Amazon VPC. For our servers, right, your machine, your computer, that's basically like an AMI and an EC2. Oops, sorry. And okay, for your storage and databases, whether you're using a DAS, SAN, NAS, or database in general, that is basically an EBS, EFS, S3, and RDS. Now, again, I might have just given a lot of these terminologies. And for you, for some of you, it is new. So let's go through some of these, no? at, least, at least the top popular ones, right? We already found the top 10. Let's go through the core. Okay, the core or the what I believe you should definitely master if you want to move to the cloud. Okay, so popular AWS services or core AWS services that you must master, um, and okay, that is already a wide adoption for you. Okay, so first let's talk about a network, no? a private network. So in your, let's say in your house, right, where you are right now, you have potentially a router there powered by a telco, right? And you have a Wi-Fi, right? And then you have computers connected to it, okay? Now, in the olden days, before Wi-Fi, that had to be a cable, right? You had to run a cable through it. Again, you would have a router, a switch, okay? a Wi-Fi. Basically, in the cloud, you also need a network. Uh, a private network, right? You don't want this network that you have at home that your neighbor can connect to, right? Uh, nakiki internet lang sayo, hindi nagbabayad, right? So it must be private. So on the cloud, again, this is the VPC or virtual private cloud. Okay, you define the network, you have subnets or groups, right? You have routings, gateways, you have knuckles and your IP address. Right, your 192.168, that's your local IP address, typically in your in your house. Okay, in the cloud, there's also something equivalent, right? So I'd like to simplify this analogy, you know, in terms of subnets or routes, right? If you think about public, okay, public meaning other people can 
generally use it as well because you allow it. This would be like EDSA or Makati Ave, right? Um, it's public road, right? You can use it. But for the private, this would be villages. When you have to enter the village, okay, you have to be a member of that village, right? Otherwise, you'll have to ask the guard to, hey, can I allow access temporarily, etc. Okay, so again, you cannot use the roads inside the village, right? Your checkpoints or your gateway Okay, are your checkpoints and entrances. And of course, who admin administers your security or your knuckles are like your guards, MMDA, and traffic enforcers, right? So again, a simple analogy on your uh, network on the cloud. Okay, so to visualize that, okay, um, just to teach everyone, okay, so there is this VPC or virtual private cloud, okay, that is inside a region. So let's say um, in AWS, that would be like Singapore region or uh, North Virginia or uh, um, um, Hong Kong is also a region, right? And so a VPC would be inside a, okay, would be inside a region. Okay. okay. And then subnets, okay, subnets are inside that region okay so visually so that you can understand that okay so now that you have this space right you have this network where you can move around or you can place services okay next component which is our number one service in the cloud is actually compute okay and what is compute or the number one okay it's basically transformation of data Okay, you need a computer to transform data. Okay, and different compute services are virtual machines, such as your computer, okay, containers, and serverless. Okay, and this is how um, it's deployed in virtual machines. Basically, there's a guest, you know, guest operating system inside the hardware. Okay, and you can have multiple uh, guest operating systems on top of a single hardware. So Again, if you think about this in our local implementation or maybe a personal implementation, this would be like virtual box okay? or, a, or a um, emulator, right? If you have emulator idea, okay? You're ha you have emulators on top of your machine. Okay? And our top one, okay, top one compute service is still a, another computer it's just another computer think of it like a ordinary desktop or laptop that you might have okay it's a ec2 or your elastic compute cloud so as a computer what you have you have your cpu you have your ram you need a disk and of course you need to connect to the connect right so you have network right so cpu ram disk and network you have to place this inside the network so that it's usable, right? And you can basically pick your own operating system, okay? And a uh, fun trivia, okay, fun trivia, okay? It is estimated that there are around 80 million, okay? 80 million EC2 launched daily, okay? So that roughly, I think that's around maybe 200,000 launched every minute so that's how many okay computers are launched in aws services All right that's, that's an amazing number now if you think about that All right so let's look at a quick summary of what an ec2 is Whatever kind of application you run, it's pretty certain that you're going to need servers. Sometimes you might need larger ones, and sometimes you might need smaller ones. Sometimes you might not need many, and other times you might need tens or hundreds. Whatever your requirements, wouldn't it be great to be able to obtain servers quickly and inexpensively? Traditionally, obtaining servers could be quite time-consuming and typically something that could take weeks or even months. You had to do research into the right kind of hardware to buy, 
maybe get budget approval, and then purchase the hardware, have it racked and stacked, and eventually get access to your servers. And once you'd purchased the servers, you were stuck with them. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or Amazon EC2, makes it easy for you to obtain virtual servers, also known as compute instances, in the cloud quickly and inexpensively. You simply choose the instance type you want, the template you'd like to use, which could be based on Windows or Linux, and launch the quantity you need. You can do this with a few clicks from the AWS Management Console or automate the process via an API using an SDK in your choice of language. Within minutes, your instances will be running and you will have access with full administrative control just like any other server. And with Amazon EC2, you pay only for what you use. When you're done using your instances, you stop them and you stop paying for them. Amazon EC2 provides a range of instance types designed for different use cases. These range from small and economical instances that are a great choice for low volume applications, all the way up to cluster compute instances designed for high performance computing workloads and cloud-based supercomputing on demand. Amazon EC2 provides instances optimized for compute, memory, storage, and GPU processing to enable you to find the right price and performance combination for whatever workloads you want to run. It's also really easy to resize your instances if your business or application requirements change. Amazon EC2 offers a choice of flexible pricing options. With on-demand pricing, you pay only for what you use. When you stop your instances, you stop paying. There are no long-term commitments or upfront fees. Reserved instance pricing lets you obtain a significant discount over the on-demand price in return for a low one-time payment. Spot instance pricing lets you name the price you want to pay for instances using market-based pricing and can allow you to obtain compute capacity at a significant discount to the on-demand price. We know that security is very important for your applications and Amazon EC2 provides a number of built-in security features. Your instances are located in a virtual private cloud, or VPC, that is a logically isolated network that you control. Amazon VPC provides you with a number of network security tools you can use to control who can access your instances. You can also connect securely to your on-premises network with a hardware-based VPN device. Amazon EC2 instances provide you with various amounts of directly attached temporary storage, depending on instance type, and you can also use Amazon Elastic Block Store, or EBS, to provide persistent block storage for your Amazon EC2 instances. Amazon EBS also offers you the ability to provision storage with a specific level of performance to meet the needs of your application. It can be difficult to predict the demand that your applications might experience, and Amazon EC2 provides auto-scaling to help ensure that your application's demands are met. Auto-scaling lets you define metrics to increase or decrease the number of instances that you are running. You can choose standard metrics such as network bandwidth or CPU utilization, or a custom metric that you define. This helps you ensure that you can meet your application's demands without manual intervention and pay only for what you need. You can sign up for an AWS account today and get started with Amazon EC2 in minutes. And with the AWS free tier, you can try cloud computing for free. Right, so that's your computer, right? Again, the cloud isn't very difficult if you stick to our core services or our popular services. It's just a computer on a network that you have to place in a subnet, okay? Now, again, as computers, we need hard disks, right? And we have a virtual disk. Think of it like a USB external hard disk, right? Okay. And in the cloud, that is what we call EBS. Okay, or Elastic Block Store. Okay? It's where you can install uh, volume. Okay? Um, ideally, you attach this to a single computer. So again, if you think about a USB, right? If you attach it to your computer, okay, uh, the other computers don't use it. Okay? And then you can detach it and then plug it to another computer and then they can access that as well. right? Because it's attached to a computer, you basically put this also in the same availability zone as your computer, right? Meaning if your computer is here with you, you don't put your hard disk elsewhere, right? You want it close to your computer, right? And of course, you have different types that are available, your SSD, right? Uh, 
if you again locally or in in our market think of it like sandisk and etc or you can use your magnetic you know, the one that spins right okay so again simply this is just a hard disk let's look at a quick uh, overview of a hard disk amazon elastic block store also known as EBS, provides persistent block storage for use with Amazon EC2 instances that can scale and adapt to meet your performance requirements. Tightly integrated with EC2 instances, Amazon EBS provides high performance, low latency block storage with four different volume types to meet the needs of any workload. SSD backed volume types deliver low latency and the highest IOPS, while HDD backed volume types deliver the highest throughput with two options for each type, depending on your performance and budget needs. SSD back volumes are best for boot volumes or transactional workloads, like enterprise applications, relational databases, and NoSQL databases. HDD backed volumes are best for applications producing streaming I.O., including big data applications, data warehousing applications, and log processing applications, or for staging application level backups before snapshotting to Amazon S3. For any type, you will have consistent performance and be able to connect different volume types to a single EC2 instance for applications whose components have different performance profiles. Because you can modify live volumes without affecting performance or availability, you can adapt easily when your needs change. And point-in-time snapshots enable efficient backup, recovery, archiving, and creating new EC2 instances, all stored in Amazon S3, which has 11 nines of durability. With encryption in flight and at rest, Amazon EBS adheres to the most stringent compliance standards and regulations. Plus, Amazon CloudWatch can provide alerts when you need to adjust capacity or volumes. Consider it for your next high-performance application deployment in the AWS cloud. Find out more at aws.amazon.com slash EBS. Amazon so again, now you have a computer, now you have storage, right? So you can practically do anything on it, right? So it's just, again, using somebody else's computer on the cloud security. Because again, you control your network on the cloud, you control your computer on the cloud, you control that hard disk on the cloud. No? So visually, again, you can see that your EBS, of course, they can be detached, but you cannot use them, right? Similarly, if you have a USB stick, or a hard disk, sorry, a hard disk, and it's not plugged to my computer, then I won't be able to read what's inside. Okay. Okay. A next top service. Okay. This, I think, if I remember correctly, this is your number three service. Top three service is your databases. So, as developers, we're very familiar with databases such as maybe MariaDB or MySQL okay, database. For enterprises, this would be uh, like Oracle, um, my, my Microsoft SQL, right? And so in the cloud, there's also a database service. Okay. So um, in the cloud, in AWS, this is what we call the RDS or Relational Database as a Service. Okay, It supports various engines, as I mentioned earlier, MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, Microsoft SQL, Oracle and even AWS has built their own um, database engine. So why do we use a managed service? Okay, for things like automated backup and maintenance, right? Locally or your own in projects, if you're doing this on your own, you might have to do like a dump daily, or you take a snapshot daily, or even you know a periodic, and this can be done automatically. So you don't forget okay, using RDS, right? Even ideas of multi-AZ, okay? having two, okay? two servers that work together so that if one server is down, okay? you are still up and you can have a immediate, okay? immediate resiliency. And that is the power of a relational database as a service versus doing it yourself. You know, DBAs, okay? database administrators, either might be expensive or specialized, right? And to some companies, they might not be, they might not be able to afford, right? 
uh, on the infrastructure level of having a DBA. But even in the cloud, okay, for the DBAs out there, now they're concentrating on optimization. Okay, no longer just the, you know, the infrastructure. Now they're talking about optimization. Okay. So a service, again, on the cloud for RDS is Aurora, which is AWS's answer to our relational database. Relational databases are at the heart of your most critical applications, but they can become difficult to manage and operate with high availability as you scale your app, installs, patching, monitoring, performance tuning, backups, scaling, security, hardware upgrades, and storage management. Database administration is resource intensive, taking time away from building your application. Amazon Relational Database Service, RDS, simplifies database management by automating time-consuming administration tasks. With less operational overhead, your team can focus on optimizing applications and getting faster results. Amazon RDS gives you the freedom to use your relational database of choice, including the most popular open source and commercial engines, and Amazon's relational database built for the cloud, Amazon Aurora. Aurora is MySQL and Postgres SQL compatible and offers the performance and availability of traditional commercial databases at a fraction of the cost. RDS allows you to scale across a global footprint of data centers with enterprise high availability and disaster recovery no matter your size. RDS automates many previously cumbersome tasks, automatic failover, backups in point-in-time restore, disaster recovery, access management, encryption, secure networking, monitoring, and performance optimization. All these and more can be enabled with a few clicks or API calls. Even highly regulated industries can leverage RDS, which meets a broad range of compliance certifications. Hundreds of thousands of AWS customers use Amazon RDS today. Find out why with a free trial. aws.amazon.com slash RDS. All right, so again, a summary of what a relational database is, especially in the cloud. Right. So again, because it's just a server, but specialized in databases, okay? So again, think of it like, again, in your network, in a particular room, okay, in a particular subnet, and there's a available stack. Just in case your primary or your master fails, there's a standby ready already for you. Okay. And again, moving forward in the cloud, of course, you need security in mind. And one of the most common security concepts is a firewall. Okay, a firewall. So you need to check okay, if the traffic is valid. Okay, and in the cloud, this is handled by the security groups. Okay, so again, by default. Okay, uh, ports are denied in. Okay, you have to show your credentials, like you are allowed to do go in, uh, but going out, you are allowed already. Okay, so this is what we call a stateful security. Uh, and here we have an example here. So, for example, if you're already going in, let's say you're going inside a movie theater, okay, or a ball guard, right? Going inside, you check your Vax card, your Vax cert. But going out, the guard will not stop you going out. You, you want to go out? Go ahead. Right? Uh, I know because you already came inside, so you're, you're, you're authenticated. I don't need to check your VAX card or your movie ticket if you're going out. Okay? So this is a simple, stateful security. Okay? And on the cloud, this is what it looks like. Basically, you put your protocol like FTP, HTTPS, HTTP, etc. your port. Okay, where is it allowed? Is it anywhere? Only your particular IP address, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay. Our next popular service or core service is unlimited storage. Where do you want to store your files in that sense where or objects? No? Let's call it objects. So think of this like a cloud storage, like Dropbox, okay, where you would upload your file, share it to other people, right? So in the cloud, in AWS, this is called AWS Simple Storage Service. Okay? 
It's a safe, secure, highly scalable cloud storage where again, you just place objects, objects inside, right? And you can also use this to host static websites. So if you're building a simple website an HTML, G J uh, JavaScript, CSS, okay, no need to make a complex server and install, you know, um, install SAMP, WAMP, uh, what, whatever you call it, Nginx, Apache, right? Because it's just pure HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah, you can just put it in this simple storage and use it as a website, right? So it's designed for 99.99% availability, but the durability okay, is 11 nines. What does 11 nine mean? Okay, if you have 10 million objects, okay, you can expect to lose one of the 10 million. Okay, so kung may 10 million peso ka, one peso mawawala sa yo sa wallet mo in 10 thousand years okay so i would really say you know by if there's no accident or no um human error right human error what you place in the internet stays on the internet as you can see right um i will outlive that one peso if i put uh if i put 10 million inside no or basically it's really very durable if you put it in the cloud so the concept here is like you have a bucket, okay, and you have an object. Okay, you just place the object in a bucket. Okay, it's very simple, right? You have a container, put objects inside, right? And how it's unique, it's your bucket key and version ID. Okay. So let's look at the quick video on your simple cloud storage. Finding a way to store, distribute, and manage all of your data is a big challenge. Running applications, delivering content to users, hosting high-traffic websites, or backing up documents, databases, and email all require a lot of storage. And the need for more storage space keeps growing every day. Building and maintaining your own storage repository is expensive and time-consuming. First, you have to buy racks and racks of dedicated hardware and software. Then, to get it all up and running, you have to hire staff and set up complex processes to make sure your storage is performing well and backed up in case something fails. Adding more capacity costs money and time to deploy more servers, hard drives, and tape backup machines. And guessing how much capacity you need in the future is difficult. Getting this wrong means either not having the storage you need or overspending and ending up with excess capacity that sits idle. What if there were a better way? Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3, provides developers and IT teams with safe, secure object storage. It's easy to use with a simple web services interface that can be used to store and retrieve any amount of data at any time from Amazon EC2 or from anywhere on the web. You just choose the region where you want your data stored, create a bucket, and you can begin storing data in S3. And with Amazon S3, you won't need a crystal ball to predict how much storage you are going to need in the future. You can store as much data as you want and access it when you need it. When it comes to storage, the last thing you want to worry about is losing valuable data. Amazon S3 helps make sure that doesn't happen by automatically making copies of your objects on multiple devices across multiple facilities. Amazon S3 also lets you preserve, retrieve, and restore every version of every object in an Amazon S3 bucket so you can easily recover if something is accidentally deleted by users or application failures. With Amazon S3, you only pay for the storage you actually use. There is no minimum fee and no setup cost. Amazon S3 offers a range of storage classes designed for different use cases, including S3 standard for general purpose storage of active data, S3 standard in frequent access for long-lived but less active data, and Amazon Glacier for long-term archive. Amazon S3 also offers configurable lifecycle policies for managing your data throughout its lifecycle. Once a policy is set, your data will automatically migrate to the most appropriate storage class without any changes to your applications. Securing your data is very important, and Amazon S3 gives you flexibility to control who can access your data with identity and access management policies, access control lists, bucket policies, and query string authentication. S3 also helps you securely upload and download your data with SSL encrypted endpoints and provides multiple options for encrypting data at rest. 
Amazon S3 helps you get the most out of your data by making sure it is stored safely, available when needed, and will scale as your needs grow. Getting started with Amazon S3 is simple. Sign up for an AWS account today, and you can create your first bucket in a few clicks. Right. And again, okay, think of it like a storage, right? So it's just available for you, everyone, okay? Uh, basically, in your network, you can have that storage use. So it's outside. Think of it like attached to your router, right? Where you can use that storage. Um, okay, since I've, I've noticed there's a question in the in the chat now, and I thank you for that question, Mark. Will S3 charge the storage used by versions? Okay, so every version is like a, a copy. Okay? It's a copy. So every version is also charged. Okay, so that's why you also have to be careful about versioning, right? Or you can also have a automated uh, systems where you want to delete previous versions as well. All right. So of course, last, no last, um, we won't have time to discuss all, even the top 10, right? Um, uh, services, we just uh, keep it to, for what I feel is core, no core or really the most popular ones where I would say that if you master this, right, there's for sure a job for you already. So monitoring, Okay, CloudWatch is how we monitor our CCTV, our um, you know checks on how is our cloud. Okay, so this is monitoring our our resources. So it's our meter in a sense, no? Our electric meter, our water meter, our kumainit na ba yung CPU natin, etc. Right. So again, this one collects and tracks metrics. Collects and monitors uh, collects and monitor the log file. Okay, set alarms. Of course, no. Yung gusto natin yung example fire alarm, right? Kung may madetect niya na smoke, di siya dapat mag-alarm na siya para ma-aware tayo, right? So this is just a monitoring service that is already pre-built to a lot of these AWS services. Okay, so sample metrics that it gets your CPU, data transfer, your read write your utilization, how many are connected actually to the database, no? but there's no operating system memory by default. Okay, So it also okay, gives you charts already and diagrams. So that's what's good about CloudWatch is you don't even have to create charting systems, right? You can already see your CPU. It's like your task monitor no? or in um, what's the equivalent for task monitor in Windows, uh, task manager. Right, so you can see if that service, that computer is running well or not. Okay. So let's look at a short video also on CloudWatch. Companies are increasing digital and building modern applications utilizing microservices and serverless architectures to scale, serve global customer base, and gain release velocity. In this world of business, Application success means better results. However, monitoring distributed applications and resources is challenging because of their complexity, data overload, and the fact that monitoring tools were built to oversee system and application performance in physical silos. To gain observability, a shift from looking for failures to finding answers is key. The solution is Amazon CloudWatch. CloudWatch is a monitoring and management service built for developers, system operators, site reliability engineers, or SRE, and IT managers. CloudWatch provides data and actionable insights to monitor applications, analyze and respond to system-wide performance changes, optimize resource utilization, and get a unified view of operational health. CloudWatch collects data in the form of logs, metrics, and events, providing a unified view of AWS resources, applications and services, and on-premise servers. You can use CloudWatch to set high-resolution alarms, visualize logs and metrics side-by-side, -side, take automated actions, troubleshoot issues, and discover insights to optimize your applications and ensure they are running smoothly. Today, Amazon CloudWatch monitors more than 800 trillion metric observations 
triggers more than 2 trillion events and ingests more than 50 petabytes of logs per month. With Amazon CloudWatch, it is easy to get started. There's no upfront commitment or minimum fee. You simply pay for what you use. Turn on the insight by visiting aws.amazon.com slash cloudwatch. So again, CloudWatch just monitors your entire cloud infrastructure. Okay. And you can also send custom metrics so you don't even have to build charting or dashboards anymore. You can send custom metrics to CloudWatch also. Okay. So basically, right? even with those core services, uh, it's really time to be a practitioner based on our trends, based on the top services or popular service that mastery, it's time to get into the cloud and become a practitioner. So the question is, how do we become a practitioner? And at this point, I'd also like to address a question from Edsel. Is AWS here in the Philippines? I always think, hey, is that adopting a software or, or a technology, is it available in the Philippines? Do I get support, right? Uh, local support, I can go to an office, etc. So AWS is, has an office here in the Philippines. It's in BGC, right? Um, unfortunately now, because it's uh, COVID, so you can't enter, but generally, yeah, you can always schedule to visit their office, right? So the business unit, it's here. Next, in terms of distribution or CDN, right? Uh, we have a edge location or points of presence okay, here. So for example, images, videos, okay, they're closer to us because they're served from our local edge location. And soon, okay, soon a local, I would say a local data center will also be here. A local zone will be deployed in the Philippines as well. Right? So it's really growing and the adoption is here as well in the Philippines. So how, okay, how can we get started aside from webinars like these? There is an upcoming training bootcamp. Okay? Um, there are two major dates here. It is a two-day, at least two-day event. No? So this is not March 5 or March 12. This is March 5 and 12. Okay? Um, so you have to register. Actually, it's still open. Um, uh, ignore the Feb 20, right? Ignore the Feb 20 there, deadline. Okay? There are already around 400, I believe, attendees. Okay, so you can still continue to register for this AWS bootcamp. So it's two Saturday mornings, right? Or let's say you really want to go intense, right? Um, you want to say, hey, cloud, I'm, I, I want to be AWS all in or cloud all in. I am willing to take a risk. I'm willing to devote time and effort to it. Uh, and you are not coming from a cloud background or a IT background, there's also this opportunity for you called the Restart Program. So it's a 12-week bootcamp. Scholarships okay, are available. Okay. So basically, we will teach you not just cloud, but also things like Python, um, Linux, okay, uh, pitching. Okay. So this is available to you. The first batch starts on March 21 and they will end on June 10. And there will be, okay, there will be job opportunities also waiting for those that graduate from this particular intense, uh, long uh, restart pro program as well. Yeah. And of course, let's say you want to do self-paced, okay? There's always the option for an LMS or learning management system. We have our skill builder, Okay, on the left, and it has a lot of learning paths for you. Uh, the simple Cloud Foundation learning path is estimated to take 13 hours. Yeah. So again, self-paced because you can. Uh, it's up to you. You can also do the AWS Educate LMS. And okay, uh, it was recently announced, you can even do labs now in the platform. So even if without a credit card, especially for those students or um, young professionals that don't have a credit card, you can actually experience the labs, okay, labs without having to open a AWS account. So do check these out as well for your own practice. Okay, so that ends my presentation, right? And could someone give me a question? So I'll ask the first question here is from John. 
is the program only for students? No? Um, so there are various programs, right? And it is a mix. Some are catered specifically for students. Some are catered for young professionals. Okay, and some are catered for, let's say, uh, the underserved. So again, just um, check these individual links. Okay, and uh, uh, the LMS, by the way, is open to all. At least that I can say the LMS or self-paced is open to all. The boot camps, the training usually are, um, you know, uh, because they're instructor led, right? So the, usually they, uh, it's targeted more for beginners. Right, so there. Uh, another question about um, restart beginner friendly. Again, yes, it is a twelve week okay, program. Again, you'll have to commit to either attend all the morning classes for twelve weeks or attend the afternoon afternoon classes all twelve weeks. Okay, let's check if there are other questions as well. Huh? Can right. some others also? Mm. Sir Rafi, I actually saw a question uh, from Justin. Uh, the question is, does AWS allow multiple collaborators to use a single project like creating instance? Yes. So in terms of collaboration, there are a lot of collaboration tools um, so that you can coordinate on a project. And they even have their own project management tools inside. So if you are able to attend um, our MOT, Okay, Ministry of Testing collaboration yesterday. Uh, CodeStar actually helps you also manage team members. So you create a project, you create the template, and then you can assign members or create members and their permissions as well. All so right. short answer is yes, collaboration is uh, possible and actually highly encouraged in AWS Cloud. All right. I actually have a question for you, Surya. So our recent article sure. states that uh, there will be a new AWS local zone to be launched in Manila. So I would just like to know your thoughts on this and what does this bring to our country? Like, what does this mean? Right. So again, you know, a local zone allows us to even develop further um, and faster okay, to our end customers. So basically what the, what the trend is happening now is that our users right are so used to the fast pace that we have to serve them closer and closer so if you look at internationally uh, how close are the services they're now at the wavelength level meaning they're at the 5g level the infrastructure the servers you can think of it like they're already in the the cell sites, no? So you're you're now just connecting to the cell site, and we know how how wide cell sites are, right? You can you probably if you look out your window or you know um, in your provinces, you can see ah uh, that there's my cell site, right? So it's that close already. Uh, local zone is not yet to that level, no? It's uh, it's um it's a uh, it's a step back, but that shows us that we are going to that level, okay? Um, other countries uh, started with local zone first and then eventually wavelength. So for us, we're getting closer and closer to that kind of uh, speed as well. All right. Thank you, Sir Rafi. All right. So good evening, sir. For the webinars like this one and bootcamp, are you going to give us a certification of participation or uh, attendance? So let me first answer the one for the this one for the webinar. We will actually be giving out certificates if you answer the feedback form to be flashed later on the screen. How about the boot camps, sir? Right. So boot camps, again, there are various boot camps, right? So some boot camps, um, uh, we will have a certificate of attendance. In some boot camps, there's actually an assessment as well. And this assessment is as, uh, if you pass this assessment, you actually get a 50% voucher for an industry level, okay, industry level certification. Okay, so you will have it's like a two step. You get a certificate that you graduated no, from the boot camp, and then you also get a voucher to get a certification on a industry level. Think of it like you're gonna take a board exam. Okay, so uh, the boot camp is like your school. You have a. Uh, it shows you that you graduated. Right? You graduated from the school, but you still have to take a board exam sometimes, right? For for a lot of professions. So it will be like that, okay, where you will uh, have a graduate 
okay, certificate if you pass the assessment. And afterwards, there is a discount to your board exam, which is our cloud practitioner uh, certification. Yeah, and then another question from Sir Marvin. Do you accept unemployed for AWS Restart? Uh, yes, it does. The, the, again, no, this program helps prepare unemployed and underemployed individuals for new careers. So definitely, uh, unemployed is accepted. So again, no, uh, uh, while you guys are typing out your question, I would first like to thank Sir Rafi for that insightful talk. So knowing the trends talaga, no, it's really important because that's how you learn to adapt and improve your business. So like what Sir Rafi said, no, uh, cloud is a growing market. Kaya hop in the trend because cloud is the way to go, ika nga. And there's a lot of AWS tools and technologies that can help your projects and, business, uh, projects and businesses. So all right, guys, I'm sure you still have a lot of questions for our AWS community hero. So there's another one from Anton. Is their AWS system used as a real-time database in SCADA systems here in the Philippines? Right. So I, uh, I'll probably ask, answer this as a last question at the moment because we're running out of time. Um, so let me answer this now. I'm not familiar with um, RTDB and SCADA specifically, but AWS offers purpose-built okay, purpose built databases. So aside from rela relational databases, um, NoSQL databases, it also it, uh, has a time series Okay, time series database. So maybe that is what your real-time database is. Okay, maybe it's a time series database. It also offers um, graph databases. It also offers crypto, or sorry, uh, not crypto, um, blockchain databases. Okay, so there's a lot of databases that's offered in AWS. So there probably is, and I wouldn't be surprised if these uh, um, RTBB or SCADA uh, is actually running on top of AWS even at the back. All right. So again, thank you so much, Sir Rafi, and thank you for everyone who, had, uh, who, has, who asked a question. Now, I would just like to happily announce now that this episode has the most number of participants so thank you so much we wouldn't have done it without you and thursday is actually my favorite day of the week because i get to talk to you guys again and that's it for a question and answer portion if you have more questions you may reach out to him on uh, you may reach out to sir rafi on his social media and you know just check his youtube channel for more updates from him again thank you sir rafi and we hope to see you next time so you truly are a source of inspiration and motivation and we hope no one day maging aws community heroes then kami agree ba guys so all right along with the community ignite series we also have more opportunities for free learning for you and we have a lot of events that will suit your interests and fit the skills you want to learn so kanina na mentioned at mr rafi no but i just want to remind you all right so in fact as cloud technologies continue to transform organizations rapidly, employees with the necessary cloud skills are also in high demand. So we at Education PH and I am and AWS want to help you learn more and become a certified AWS cloud practitioner. So we offer a cloud training bootcamp through specialized courses, and the training is open to students and educators for free. So you may check it out on our Facebook post for more information. And you can also register in this link. Let me just chat it here. All right. And aside from the AWS uh, Cloud Training Bootcamp, there's also an AWS Restart program right here in the Philippines. So today, Education PH is glad to be a part of the AWS Restart program in the Philippines. So what, uh, what is AWS Restart? So AWS Restart is a 12-week. I think that's three months, a virtual training program that covers fundamental AWS cloud skills as well as practical career skills such as interviewing and resume writing. So it uh, para sa sa, to help individuals prepare for entry-level cloud roles. So this program helps prepare unemployed and underemployed individuals for new careers in technology through scenario-based exercises, labs, coursework about Linux, Python networking, security, and relational database skills. Uh, everyone can join in the bootcamp. Yes, everyone. So with this, we are inviting you guys to enroll on this free AWS Restart program. You can apply on or before March 6, 2022 at go.education.ph slash AWS Restart there. So 
we would also love to spend more hours with you tonight. So come over to the AWS user group Build Hers Plus monthly meetup. It's happening right after this episode, all right? So in the meetup, we will be talking about S3 Object Lambda, the importance of well-architected framework and blockchain on AWS. So they will also be giving out badges to the attendees. So here's the link and we'll see you later. Again, that's the monthly meetup of AWS UG Builders Plus. So see you guys later. Also happening right after this is the Philippine.net Users Group Online Dev Session, orchestrating.net core containers on AWS. So it's a collaboration between Philippine.net Users Group and AWS Club Filipinas. So it's definitely a must attend for tonight. It features Richard Ilagan, a prototyping architect in AWS ASEAN. So sign up na kayo agad in this link. And again, we'll see you tonight. So i multitask niyo yung events natin tonight. All right. So our last event for this month is on Saturday. So that's our last event for the month. That's 7.30 p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. This is another community collaboration. And this time, it's with React JS Philippines. So featuring Kay Alvarado, the event will be all about reach micro front ends with AWS. So all right, here's the registration form for the React JS Philippines event. Feedback done. So is that certificate? It, uh, the e-certificates will be sent in your email address, so make sure that you have provided the correct one. So next event, event, we also have a challenge for you, right? So brought to you by Accenture Philippines and AWS Club Filipinas, we are inviting you to sign up for our Tech Explore Innovation Challenge. So here's a question for you guys, okay? So how might we use technologies like AWS to help achieve any one of the following UN Sustainable Development Goals. So yun yung kilangan yung sagutin and we can't wait for what you have as an answer. So for more details about the challenge, uh, yeah, the contest, please visit this link right here. Again, so make sure you're taking all the notes from the chat box, all right? So another one, no, we have another one for you, but this time it's for the International Women's Month. So brought to you by, again, AWS UG, Builders Plus is a month-long celebration by helping women level up their cloud skills through mentoring. So to our pretty ladies here tonight, save the following dates, okay? So we'll be having certified cloud practitioner coffee sessions and solutions architect associate coffee sessions on March 6th. 13, 20, and 27. Again, that's every Sunday for the month of March, 6, 13, 20, and 27. So the CCP uh, will be from 1 to 3 p.m., while the SAA will be conducted from 3 to 5 p.m. So see you all there again. That's every Sunday to March. So as you can see, no, padame ng padame ang mga ina-announce ko every episode. We have partnered with a lot of tech communities and conduct events that will really cater your field of interest. So sali na kayo guys and do not miss it. At ito pa. All right, ito pa. Before I tell you guys all about the feedback form, I am inviting you to our events naman this March. So for our next episode, that's March 3, uh, Thursday, okay? It's all about getting started with AWS CDK. Very interesting. Kaya naman, sign up na because kahit free ang uh, community in night series, the slots are limited. So make sure to get the tickets now bago kayo maubusan for March 3, all right? And then after that, we'll be having automated vulnerab vulnerability. Nako, pati ako vulnerable sa pag <laughs> straight speaking. Ayan. So management on AWS with Amazon Inspector. And then for March 17, another CAS episode. And on March 19, we'll be having hosting static websites on a cloud storage, a collaboration between AWS Cloud Filipinas and PWA Filipinas. And then after that, another collab uh, collaboration naman with Pizza Pie. I think that's the Python community in the Philippines. So it's Vos Comfriend. Naku, napaibang language na ako dito. So ML and NLP for dummies. dummies. And then the next uh, episode we have here is Building a Secure AWS Foundation. And the last CIS episode for March is CIS 34. That's on March 31. Ayan, napakadami guys. and daming events. Sobrang bonga and exciting. You can check all about it on our social media account. So make sure to follow our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn to stay updated. Church lang, AWS Club Filipinas. 
or scan the QR codes flashed on the screen. So grabe, I have learned a lot from this one hour tech driven webinar. Thank you so much, Sir Rafi. And we hope that you have learned a lot in this episode. Now, I want to take this opportunity to invite you all in a photo op. So open cam naman tayo dyan. Ayan, ready na sila Sir Rafi. Ayan, how about yung Hello, Acha. Ayan, hello, Jaden. All right, I can see yung ganda ng background. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. Ayan. Ayan, hello, Eric. Hello, Alistair. Wow, very unique name right there. Hello, po. Ayan, hello, Janina. Hello, Gian. Hello, Joshua. And hello, Carl. All right, I'll be uh, waiting for all of you. And in a count of five, four, three, two, one, we will take a picture. All right, guys, smile. All right, thank you so much. And that wraps up the 29th episode of the Community Ignite series, Trending AWS Cloud Services and How to Be a Practitioner. We would love to hear your feedback and to answer our CSAT form. Please go to go.addiction.ph slash CIS29 feedback. So please make sure to provide a correct email address because this is also for you to get an e-certificate. And speaking of e-certificates, don't forget to post them because by the end of the month, malapit na, no? We will be choosing the top attendee of the month. And the winner will receive AWS credits worth $20. So compile nyo na, guys, yung mga e-certificates nyo and post it with the hashtag EducationPH and hashtag AWSC Club Pilipinas any day this month. And also, don't forget to tag us on the post. So thank you guys for so coming bye bye sa amin. And I'm excited to see you all next week. Make sure again to follow our social media accounts and uh, forget, uh, don't forget to join the C-Club community. We have a lot in store for you. And that's all because of our co-presenters. Thank you so much to AWS and AWS C-Club Filipinas. And once again, thank you everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you next week. Goodbye, Ralph. <laughs> Yeah, bye everyone. The power of the AWS cloud is within your grasp. That's why we have chosen the AWS Essentials trainings to bring everyone on the same level of knowledge. So when you're talking about cloud, everyone has a basic understanding what is meant. Whether you are just starting out or looking for ways to scale and speed up your success, you have a need for cloud skills. AWS training and certification has solutions for AWS customers and AWS partners, as well as the next generation of builders and leaders. Developed by the experts at AWS, our training resources help you advance in your career, building cloud skills on your team to innovate and achieve business goals. We made sure to provide all types of training because as you know, not all adult learners learn the same way. Some learners prefer instructor-led training, while others prefer self-paced. No matter your role, we can help you gain in-demand cloud skills, both introductory and advanced, and validate your expertise with an AWS certification. Preparing for the exam really reminded me the fun and enjoyment there is when it comes to education and self-learning. Whether you're developing a new application or growing a business, AWS training and certification helps the builders of today and tomorrow leverage the power of the AWS cloud.